What's going on, everyone? My name is Everett Lorm. It is Wednesday, May 12th, and today I am joined by Rob St. Clair. We're going to chat a little bit about the VLA Cup going on this weekend. Where's it going? Where's it going down this weekend? We are bringing 11 teams from literally all over the United States to the middle of nowhere in far northeastern Indiana. Great. That, uh, I, seem, I, I feel like that's on par for where you know the U.S. and North America feels where men's volleyball is. Very typical. Uh, it just so happens that there's a guy you may have heard of by the name of Lloyd Ball who may or may not have an Olympic gold medal in his possession that owns uh, that, that built and owns a gym in the town of Angola, which is like as far northeast of Indiana as you can get. So it's like equally annoyingly far from Chicago, Detroit, and Indianapolis. Uh, but every time we bring people there, it ends up being a phenomenal event. And this one's no exception. It's, it's just massive. It's so much bigger than any event I thought we could pull off. So uh, we definitely got our work cut out for us, but it's going to be so sick. I, I can't, like, I, we, we've done a lot of previewing of it already in various platforms. I'm excited to do that again here. Um, it's going to be incredible. It really is. It, uh, there's, a, there's a lot to hype up. There's a lot of, like, legitimate reason for excitement. And there's just so much volleyball to consume all weekend. So I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, I was taking a look at your schedule. We're just going to jump over to the schedule r right now. And you guys are starting at 8.30 a.m. on Friday morning. That is early like you, you guys, 7 30 sorry sorry uh, 7 30 i was looking at it says 7 30 yeah. on, on the screen right now and i and i was looking at that but 7 30 a.m you guys are starting matches all throughout the day um and the last match is at 8 p.m wow that's <laughs> that's that's, that's pretty that's pretty insane so um it's going to be a pretty high level though isn't it i I, I can't like back this up with empirical data, but I've been billing it as the highest level and deepest top to bottom men's volleyball tournament ever played in the U S not by the national team. Even more so than like I, PVL, like old school days. Like PVL, I think PVL, PVL is the PVL is the closest thing for sure. And uh, a lot of our teams this weekend were in those PVL years in 2014, 15, 16, et cetera. But I think top to bottom, uh, like back in the PBL era, there were three, maybe four teams that legitimately had a chance to win. And then those teams were like stacked, absolutely ridiculous rosters and some serious high level of ball play. But this is the same thing with a better format and more teams that can compete at that level. So I, I might give the edge to the VLA Cup this weekend, but it, it is on par with those via with not those via like those uh, PVL events that USAV used to have at adult nationals every Memorial day. Uh, that was like the thing that they worked up to all year long. And it was like the only thing that they did that year. And it was always just electric. Those matches were amazing. I remember them very well. So this is, if you want to think of it as an evolution of that several years down the line, uh, it's not a bad way to think about it. Some of the teams are the same. Some of the names even are the same. Uh, but the, the level top to bottom is going to be absolutely outrageous and a uh, huge shout out to like the people at the VLA, my guy Vincent Zuki in particular, that did a lot of the work on the way that the schedule works. It's awesome. And other for the fact that it's going to run me into the ground as a commentator doing 13 matches in three days, uh, which is just an off the charts number. Uh, the format of the tournament is absolutely fantastic. And uh, with all those matches that you're seeing, uh, we're doing two courts. So there's going to be at least two matches of volleyball going on in the gym at the same time. So we can get into that in detail. But that's that's just the beginning. Yeah, it's. Uh, I definitely want to talk about the schedule because it, it, it seems like a lot. Before, but before we do, could, let's break down kind of the VLA just a, a little bit, maybe for those who don't know. And then let's talk about some of the names that are going to be kind of playing this weekend. Um, I, I know because you've been bragging on the Discord a lot about some of the guys that – who are going who are going to be playing in this tournament um so that i i i'm i'm excited for it um but before that let's kind of break down what the the vla is and kind of where it came from a little bit because i i don't know if you know some of my viewers and and fans in canada may not know what the the volleyball league of america is it's, it's a very you know like um uh marvel-esque name and logo you guys got over here well uh, we appreciate that i've got it got it on the shirt at all times, which we set up the website up. So 
Yeah, I, I've I've been on the show with you ever a couple times. Once was right before the VLA was in Phoenix. Like I was already in Arizona when we filmed that one. We were talking about the ridiculous stuff that was going on in Champions League at the time. Uh, but I think we touched on some VLA at that point. And then when you, me, and Dan got together the last time, I went on quite the rants when Athletes Unlimited was happening. Um, and, and comparing that a little bit to how the VLA works, uh, that, that was definitely an all-timer. But uh, yeah, sure, we, we can talk about the VLA as an organization because there are a lot of people who don't know it exists. And I can't blame anybody for that because the timing of it's coming into existence is uh, hand in hand and unmistakably linked to the COVID-19 pandemic, obviously. So the, the VLA came into existence basically in like December of 2019, January, 2020. And just doing the math with dates right there, you can understand why you probably haven't seen that much from the VLA just yet, because right as I was starting my podcast, The Deep Corner, uh, we were ramping up for a season in 2020. And like, it's funny, I had Boy Ball on episode one of my show back in, like, in very late February of 2020. And we were talking about all these big things we had planned. And then not two weeks later, uh, the whole the whole world shut down. And in many places, it's it's still that way. So yeah, the yeah, amount like, of- Like Toronto. Like, like Toronto, Ontario, for example. Um, fortunately, yeah, we've had a, a little bit better luck down south of the border with- being able to get opened up, get more vaccines readily, readily available, get people to be able to travel places and compete. So we pulled off a couple of events. We had one big one last July. Um, like four of our premier teams got together at Lloyd's Place, same gym as you're going to see this weekend. And we played a really good tournament across, I think, three days. And uh, that was huge because it was literally the only like amount of video content that we had to skate on for like six months after that. So uh, pull it off like a infant professional sports league in a pandemic where you can't get together in person is a tremendous challenge. But uh, I guess the thesis statement is a, this is a professional volleyball league. This is the, the, the early beginnings of what we hope to be a long-term sustainable, legitimate professional volleyball league um, in North America. Right now it's in the U S I would love to get Canadian teams at some point. I think that would be amazing. Uh, I, I may have heard some rumblings about, some people trying to, trying to get a, a, a Canadian team in, in there. It is not out of the question by just, any just, means. Just, just some rumblings, though. Nothing nothing right. concrete, but, you know, some right. interest for sure. Yeah, we are by no means exclusive to within our borders, uh, for sure. So the, the, the goal for the long term is to build it into a place that guys, Canadian, American, and anybody else can have legitimate professional volleyball careers that can make a living and not have to go overseas. Like, Currently and all the times before that has been what you have to do if you want to make a living playing. So it's something that everybody has wanted for a very long time, professional volleyball in North America. It's been attempted a handful of times. Um, and there's been things that have gone well and not well about all those attempts previously, but none of them are around anymore for a reason. So the what's different about the VLA, I think, is the way that it's built. Uh, there is a board of directors of seven people, uh, Lloyd Ball being one of them. The organizational fundamentals are rock solid, much more so than any like volleyball organization of its kind has been before. And I've had quite a look behind the scenes at all that, of course, but there, and you know this well, Everett, people that do volleyball for a living aren't very good at the, like the business organizational side of things on average and vice versa. When you do get people who are really good at business or marketing or whatever, they don't know anything about volleyball. So that is always a difficult bridge or a difficult like divide to bridge. Um, and we're starting to be able to do that a little bit, which is awesome. So everybody involved is a, is a lifelong volleyball person. There are a few with tremendous like business sense and organizational skills and everybody's got lifelong volleyball connections, which is a huge deal in the volleyball world as well. So that's kind of who we are as an organization. The We've, we've played a little bit. Uh, we've had something that resembles a season so far in 2021. We played in January. We played in February in Phoenix. We played last month in upstate New York. I could practically wave hi to you from across Niagara Falls. That was, that was so annoying because you guys were just down, yeah. you know, just across the border in Buffalo. That's an easy drive from from Toronto. Would have been would have been great to, to be able to go, but yeah, didn't, well, didn't then want to we're, quarantine we're, for two weeks after that. Right, we're going back there in future years. So all right, perfect. That happen. But um, 
we, we've had these, these little events where we'll get two or three or maybe even four teams in a gym in a given weekend. But this one coming up this weekend is a different story. Uh, 11 teams on two courts is a very different beast. So uh, that's why we've been working on this so hard for so many weeks and months about scheduling and just getting everyone in the building, first of all, and then how we can produce an event and like produce it online and in the house uh, in such a way that it deserves for the level of level it's going to be played. So uh, we're very excited about it. And I have an open book about anything that you want to know. So, so who, uh, we can dive into it as much as you want. You've obviously mentioned Lloyd Ball. And he's a staple of his team pineapple that, you know, is kind of front and center in this league and, and leads the way. But who else can we expect to be competing uh, in this tournament this weekend? I know you've been dropping a, a few pretty big names, both, you know, current professional players. You've got NCAA big names who have just won NCAA championships. So break it down. Like who, who are some of the players that we can kind of expect this weekend uh, competing in Indiana? Happily. So uh, if you want even more detail on this, uh, I did an episode of the deep corner like last week where I broke a lot of it down team by team, but to just do it more quickly. Uh, Lloyd's a big one, but he's actually not going to play much. He'll play a little bit because the man's 48. Yeah, for God's I sake. mean, like, he's, he's getting up there in age. We're not expecting yeah. him to be Superman. Just come in, sling the silky mitts a little bit, just show everyone that he's got it. And then, you know, grab a clipboard for the rest of the tournament. And just his presence in the gym makes all the difference in the world. Even like the, Teams are afraid of the fact that he might even perhaps come off the bench for two points. Like, yeah, he has that like level of of intimidation factor, and for good reason. But uh, let's see. Um, one really big one that I'm super excited about, like you like you alluded to, a guy that got the championship winning kill in the NCAA championships, like literally four days ago. Um, a middle blocker out of the University of Hawaii by the name of Pat Gassman, a six foot ten monster is uh, is making the trip to indiana like literally a week after winning the biggest tournament match of his life uh, he's coming to play vla and he's coming to play with a brand new team of all things a team called new york pride out of long island so he's coming and along with him another hawaii guy is uh, james anastasiadis who is a cool story was always there like first guy off the bench their third outside hitter who would come in and serve and rip aces off the bench all the time last year um, when COVID canceled their season last year, he had, he still had eligibility, but he had a choice to make about what his role on the team was going to be. If he was even going to stay at all, he chose to stay, but he was actually a student manager for Hawaii volleyball this year. So he didn't suit up, but he still gets a ring as national championship as national champion in a very different role. So, um, he does get to suit up this weekend for that same New York pride squad. So they've, excited they've, about that. They've got a sick logo. Like I'm, I'm looking the at the logo their... is sick. It's just like teal colored lion thing teal, it's teal color, colored simba you know it looks like rafiki yeah. drew that on, on the wall 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 in the lion king but yeah damn that that's a that's a pretty uh uh nice logo and you know some some pretty de decent schools uh out there uh even a, a third hawaii guy uh evan la rochelle uh a, a 511 libero so looks like some talent you're saying this is a tier two team that's correct. So it's a good time to explain kind of how that all works. So right now the VLA has got five teams in tier one. That's like the, the top level competitive, like division of the league that contends for the top level championship at the moment, I suppose. But the, like this, this tournament this weekend has 11 teams. So you might be wondering who the heck are the other six. And so a thing that we've been doing, starting to do this year so far and is exploding big time this weekend is expanding the league with this tier two idea. So as an expansion model of trying to get more teams in, because there's been a lot of interest, uh, but rather than just pick anybody who DMs us on Instagram and put them in a tournament, we want to give them a chance to play, but also give them a chance to prove that they fit both competitively and as an organization, if they're like committed to it enough to like be considered part of the VLA full time. So this tier two idea is a thing that you see all over the place in Europe. Germany has like three leagues. Italy has like three leagues. France has at least two. Like all of them have have tiers and divisions of the same like league governing body, but there's different competitive rungs of the ladder. And that's kind of what we're doing here too. So when, when teams express interest in joining us, we find a way to get them in and play wherever and whenever that's possible. And everyone's going to start off in tier two, but they'll move up as quickly as they're capable, both competitively and organizationally. So uh, the goal is, I can already tell you right now, that next year there will be a lot more than five Tier 1 teams, which is fantastic news. So that's this Tier 2 idea. It's a, a, an expansion model that 
gives us a greater quantity of teams, but with a certain like baseline level of quality that we're looking for. Damn, that sounds uh, like it's going to be pretty exciting. So essentially we've got Iceman, uh, LVC, Rising Tide, and Ascension and, and Pineapple are, are the tier one teams, correct? That's that's correct. And, and then they're seated one through five this particular weekend. But there are some, <laughs> there are some more outside of those five that are like legitimate championship well, contenders. Well, it, it isn't like Jalen Penrose? Isn't he on Boston Bounce? He is. So that's another big name, definitely worth talking about. Jalen Penrose is an opposite that's played in Germany for four years, and he's been in Hershing for the last two, in particular. Um, then opposite out of Penn State, he played in Buffalo a couple weekends ago. It's first time I've ever seen him play in person, and I was impressed. <laughs> I mean, he's six eight. He's like such a perfect, well built athlete. He touches so high. He, he has a phenomenal arm and just a well polished, like legitimate professional point scorer uh, for the Boston Bounce, who's a tier two team. Like they showed up, they had Jalen Penders on the right side, and they only won one match that weekend. That's how, like how good they were, but also how good their competition was. Like I think that does a lot to legitimize the league right there. So uh, that's a very big name uh, for sure. If, if Bounce is going to go deep into this bracket, it's going to be on his shoulders for sure. And the pool that they have in day one is, is absolutely insane. So they've got their work cut out for them. Yeah, it's uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be pretty gnarly. Now you guys got an, an odd number of teams with the 11. So you've got a pool of three, two pools of, of four. Uh, I like how you're employing the beach uh, system where – Four, one plays four, two plays three, and then the you know the right. two winners play. So in, instead yep. of instead of the the full on pool play, uh, I like that. But still, like th- this is a lot of matches for for these teams. <laughs> like two matches, two matches a day, all day Friday. Then you've got two two matches uh, on Saturday and two matches on Sunday. Like this is this is this is worse than the FIVB, and I rag on the FIVB for for schedules. <laughs> but man. How how lo- how is Loy at forty eight years old going to be playing six matches over the course of three he, days? He's not, and that is why these teams are bringing rosters just the depth that they have is so that they can survive a tournament with that sort of schedule. Uh, now, I actually think that schedule is pretty generous, only because I'm doing five matches Friday, five matches Saturday, and three matches Sunday myself. So. I don't feel bad for any of these guys that are trying to complain about it, but, <laughs> but I definitely get it. Like it's a lot of volleyball. There is so much volleyball going on and we have a huge task to broadcast it all, but the guys, the guys playing, it's, it's no joke. There, there will, their depth of all these rosters will definitely be tested for sure. And we like it that way. I think it is, it crowns a worthy champion to be able to use some of your guys off the bench and have them be able to keep your level high enough to get to the semis or get to the finals or whatever and have your seven starters be fresh enough to win that tournament. So I actually love that about it. Can can you explain to me a little bit about how the championship bracket times work? Because yes, on can. one side of the bracket, you've got the first semifinal be playing at 8 a.m. And then on the other side of the bracket, the, or sorry, not the quarterfinals being played at 8 a.m. And then the, on the other side of the bracket, you have the pre-quarters going down after that. After. So you're doing so, one side of the bracket completely first and then the other side of the bracket? you got to remember we've got two courts. So th- the reason why that, that second pool B, second pool C match is first is because it's the only one of the quarterfinals where we don't have to wait for another match to happen so that we can fill a team into that spot. So the all four of the quarterfinals there that like second column of matches those are all on court one they're all on the main court that'll be live streamed like with me that's my court but the other ones uh the three play-in games on the far left there in the first column are played on court two they're played on the second court so we can get them done in time for the winners of them to come over to court one and play the quarterfinals Mm -hmm. so uh okay the the graphic that you're looking at i'm starting to see the courts on it but yeah, I'm starting to see movie. the genius that that you were you were talking about. I, I understand now. So you've you've just got basically an 8 a.m. game, an 11 a.m. game, a 2 p.m. game and a 5 p.m. game on that court on Saturday on the live okay. stream. court. You yeah. know what? I, I'm I'm no longer questioning it. Good job. Good. That's, yeah, that's some good I, management. Good way to have media in mind. I'm liking this. It's yeah, it's really good for the teams and it just makes sense for the space that, they, that we're dealing with. So I want to explain how how we're kind of tackling the broadcasting of two courts at the same time. Um, first of all, I can't commentate two courts at a time. So I'm going to be on court one. Any match that you see there for on Friday for the pools, it has the YouTube logo next to it. That's 
that's going to be with me. It's going to be on the YouTube channel broadcast to everybody. But the rest of the matches on the other court are also going to be live broadcast to everybody if you join the YouTube channel as a member, which is literally 99 cents a month. So pretty good deal if you want to watch any of those teams in particular. If you want to watch those matches live, um, you just become a member of the YouTube channel and you can watch them at that point. But also, after the tournament's over, uh, we're going to make them all public for everyone to watch after the fact anyway. So Great. Um, there's two full courts of matches going on Friday and Saturday, literally all day. But on Sunday, championship day, none of that two-court business. It's just one court. We're going to move. Well, has got three courts in the gym. We're going to play on like either side Friday, Saturday, and then move it to the dead center on Sunday, play both semis in the finals with – substantially increased production and just make a very big deal out of those matches. So that's kind of the strategy for how you can follow along with the whole two court idea. If you want to watch any of the games that are going on court two, just become a member of the YouTube channel uh, or wait till after the tournament. And watch 99 it. Cents. That. That's nothing, right? That's like, yeah, it's, 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 li- it's literally nothing, you know, just find 99 pennies that are now uh, obsolete. Do you guys still have pennies in, in, the, in America? We, got we, rid- do. We, we got rid of the penny. They do, yeah. I think it's only a matter of time, but we do have pennies for now. Yeah. And uh, a perfectly good thing to waste them on is watching like 100%. 11 additional matches of volleyball live if you're into that. I will. I, unfortunately, I will watching be watching very little, if any. I'm moving this weekend. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I may not even. Maybe I'll watch some on, on Sunday, but I, we're not going to have. Good luck. Moving sucks. I hate moving. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it's going to be. Uh, I'm excited to move out of the um, shoebox that I l- is falling apart around me uh, that I live in now. So I'm excited to move, um, but does, that just means that I'm probably not going to be watching um, or listening to your your, your sultry tones uh, on, on the weekend. But well, I'm glad you're crazy I'm, not to do it on mute anyway. <laughs> that was the joke I made earlier today. Yeah. No, of course not. I, the only reason I come watch is, is for you. I mean, that's not entirely true, uh-huh. but... Um, but but yeah, do you, I think def, people should definitely uh, check out this th- this tournament and, and this event because I think it's it's going to be a banger. Like for sure, I, let's I want to at least give a little bit to the rest of the team just to let you know kind of who they are. So starting from the top, uh, the Chicago Icemen won that tournament last summer at Lloyd's Place, so that's why they're the one seed there. All right, definitely the team to be there. My hometown team. I live in Chicago. I was at practice with those guys last night um they're sick <laughs> they're so good they have a um they have dave weizork who's coming back but he's not going to play much um because he had he had like an injury at the end of his season in germany that he couldn't figure out and he got an answer to the question of what the heck happened to me and the answer was he had two concussions in pretty quick succession so he's been cleared to start moving around again but he's definitely not gonna like, play every match like he did last summer that's okay because they're pretty loaded everywhere else. They've got a setter named Sunil Thomas, who... Oh, it's uh, you guy. Yeah, I remember uh, Sunil Thomas. Yeah, Ohio State, he was the backup on the two championship teams, and then the team was his. He played in Sweden for a couple of years. Uh, a guy named Griffin Shields is a big opposite, who also played at Hershing maybe three or four years ago. Uh, Will Kraft played at Lundberg this year, outside hitter. Mike Mikolau, uh played in Sweden, won the Swedish domestic title this year. He's an outside um, Big middles across the board and two nasty liberos. Uh, Peter Josidis won a championship at Loyola in 2014. Um, so Chicago's loaded. They will definitely, they're a, a for sure a championship contender. I expect them to make it to Sunday and, and like threaten to win the whole tournament. Okay. Um, LVC is, is seated second. They lost in the finals to Chicago last summer. Um, they've had a hit or miss year so far. They, they're like, I think they're, three and four on the season uh yeah, but they that's, what they that's what you you got up here three and four okay yeah but they all they always like in, in a big tournament like this they're gonna pull out all the stops and make some additions to the roster that are very notable so uh, i picked up a little baron named andrew sato out of long beach state who's a big name because his dad gary was with the men's national team forever um greg petty is a, actually chicago-based outside hitter they've picked up he played in where did he play this year Cyprus, I think. He's actually played all over Europe and spent some time in the national team gym. Um, Amir Lugo Rodriguez is a middle out of Long Beach as well, who coaches on the women's side at Northwestern here in Chicago now. So they're reaching outside their normal like crew of upstate New York and East Coast guys, which are ballers anyway, because anybody from the East Coast is, who's gone to tournaments has 
surely lost to LVC on their way to winning the championships every weekend. So um, they're stacked too. They have tons of size. They have all the giant middles in the world. They have a guy named Mike Marshman who got to the semis in France A this year, which is a big deal. So they're going to be very, very, they're going to be very, very good. Um, Ascension out of Arizona is seated third. They're going to be, I don't expect them to get to Friday, to get to Sunday because a lot of their roster that's really good is actually playing for a different team this weekend, which is kind of a confusing thing that I explained on the deep corner the other day, but basically they're a handful of Ascension's core that live in Arizona will routinely go to Southern California and play adult tournaments with a team called Ruckus. Mm. And there's never been an event before where both of those teams have been there because like Ruckus plays locally in SoCal and then Phoenix plays VLA stuff. Uh, but now they're both coming to this, this tournament and a lot okay. of those guys had to make a choice because uh, they couldn't play for both teams. And many of them, actually, I think all of them are playing for Ruckus, which is why they are an immediate championship contender. So okay. listen, to, listen to this, listen to this roster. Uh, Joe Kaliakamoa, setter out of BYU, played in A1 Italy forever. Uh, is, Michael this, Wexter. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is Ruckus? All right. Jumping this over. This is Ruckus. All right. Michael Dude, Wexter. Just, I, I see him. We're, we're good. We're good. Wexter played, Wexter played in Gießen in Germany a couple of years ago. He might jump higher than a human being I've ever seen. Um, okay. Let's see. Kavin Vaz is the middle who played Cal Baptist and Pepperdine. Max Chamberlain, Pepperdine. Uh, let's see. Caleb Denmark, Pepperdine. Uh, Liam Maxwell is an outside out of Belmont Abbey on the East Coast. Kyle Graham is a really good outside hitter. Eric Ensing is a both pin guy who's the older brother of Kyle Ensing who plays right. the national team. Uh, two unreal liberos, uh, Garrett Como and CJ Suarez. So uh, that, that I expect that team to make it to Sunday and contend to win the championship as well. They're absolutely loaded. And uh, they're a, just a cool organization. They are, they are independent and they really have dominated Southern California adult volleyball for a while now. So we're really excited about them. And there is another Southern California team that I also kind of expect to win the tournament or like at least contend to win the tournament. And that's the rising tide. So they're a PVL holdover from that era of those tournaments and where they used to be kind of a UC Santa Barbara alumni team. Um, now there are a lot more than that. Yeah, there are Lewis middle. Richard out here. Lewis Richard is a Long Beach state guy who won those two natties. Uh, mm -hmm. Chris Johnson is a like six eleven middle that was in the national team gym forever. Uh, Matt August played in Czech Republic this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Marty Ross is a big middle. Jacob Schmigel is a big middle. Uh, Raymond Barsimian is an opposite who's really good. Uh, Aaron Kobe is a French guy who played at UC Irvine who's really good. Uh, Rob Malahi set at Pepperdine. Uh, Ryan Radira played libero at, at Irvine. So they are they're stacked too. <laughs> like it's insane. It's like everybody who's in the U.S. knows that SoCal is like the most volleyball rich region. Of course. And of course. So uh, it's about time that we got not just one team, but like two legitimate like championship threats from that area. Like it's important for us to be able to reach that that market. So uh, I'm really stoked about those two teams. And then don't forget about Team Pineapple. If there of course, was a of comparison, course. of course. Team Pineapple is like the New England Patriots. Oh, really? You're going to go that oh, yeah. deep? Well, think about it. In, in the 2010s decade, Team Pineapple won literally everything there was to win. Okay, I guess right. and and Lloyd Ball is about as close to Tom Brady as it gets. The guy just keeps playing. Everyone expects him to get old and retire, and then he just doesn't, and he just keeps winning. He's like exactly the same thing, except instead of like twilighting his career for a different team, he instead just snaps his fingers and becomes Bill Belichick. It's, it's basically what he's doing now. Fair enough. Yeah. So uh, Pineapple is obviously they're they're in a turnover period in age where they're trying to get some younger guys in, including literally the older guys children now becoming old enough to play for the team which is insane um but they they're going to be really good too they picked up brandon schmidt who was a middle of the national team gym the last several years uh Pellegrin vargas is a kid from puerto rico that has captained puerto rico's senior national team already for like three years and he's like 23 years old okay which is ridiculous yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I know who vargas is yeah, he's nasty. They have a libero named Luis Bertrand, who's unbelievable, too. Um, I, I thought they might bring Marcus Nilsson over from Sweden, but I don't think that's happening. So instead, you um, – what a – yeah, what a loss. Instead, you get to watch Bruno. Uh, Bruno Amarim da Silva is a Brazilian guy who's played AVP Beach forever, played at, like, 15 different countries indoor overseas. So he's a monster. 
Um, they're, they're really like built to win this tournament. There's one tournament that you know Loy wants to win. It's this one because he's hosting it because of how big of a deal it is. Um, if he has to suit up, if that's what it's going to take, then he's going to do that. So they are okay. like a, a, a dark horse contender to go to and perhaps win the finals. So don't All right. that's the final thing. Wow. Seeing Loy Ball suit up again would be uh, you know, worth the, the price of the 99 cents in itself. <laughs> even though you don't even need to pay the 99 cents because all of all of those matches will be on on for free so that's uh that's pretty rad that's some pretty stacked lineups like you guys uh ha- have some quality athletes going on out there so it's it's definitely going to be interesting yeah for like as early as the vla is into its existence the like level of talent we've already been able to draw in a pandemic is is pretty off the charts and I, I know the organization is proud of that and we know that like all we have to do is get them all into a gym together and the the level of volleyball on the court will speak for itself so a lot of guys who are current like overseas guys that are back in the summer a lot of guys who were doing that in the last couple of years obviously some who have reached like the very tip of the mountain top of volleyball in, in the entire world of the game so uh the names are there and the What's cool is that a lot of the teams, like some of the names that you won't necessarily know are just as good because these teams have been in the gym and practicing together for a few months now. As like, as things have started to open up, the teams really are like based in the communities that they claim to represent. So they have been able to practice together, which is huge. Like everybody knows how much of a, like a difference that little bit of detail that comes from practice makes in a tournament like this and like in competitive volleyball. So uh, that has a lot to do with the level that you're going to be able to see is the fact that these guys really do know each other. They really are, have like played together before, not just like meeting the morning of the tournament in most cases. Of course, that's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I really love this idea for basically because, I mean, you and I both both know this, that for every guy who's having a pretty good career, obviously not the, not the top guys, but even some of them, like we know uh, another guy or maybe two who – didn't play volleyball professionally or, or long term just because the reality is of playing professionally overseas and in Europe and finding ha- having an agent and finding contracts and you know maybe you don't get a great league like there's always those guys that you be like man like if you think this guy was good there was this guy and it just it just never worked out for him right so the the reality of a of a league like this is great for you know Obviously, it, it, this isn't for the top national team guys. This isn't for the guys who are playing in the in the big leagues. It's for that that second, no, not even second tier, like that that half step in between for for those guys, you know, the the quality guys who just you know don't get very many swings. So I, exactly. I'm stoked for, stoked for this. Yeah, there's a lot to be said for that because like they're the guys that are playing in this league, even the ones that are in Europe right now, but more so the ones that aren't whether or not they used to be and just chose to cut their career short because like doing the overseas thing is hard. I've talked to so many guys on my show on the deep corner. We dug into every different lifestyle you could possibly have going over to Europe to play volleyball. And the moral of the story is that it's just difficult to do. Uh, it's, it's you're eight, nine, 10 hours away from your family. You don't necessarily speak the language. It's so difficult to, just have that as a lifestyle, not just talking about the volleyball stuff. So the guys that are are here that are playing this weekend deserve to have an opportunity to play at this level domestically. It's something that should just morally, philosophically should exist. Agreed. And not not even just past that, the, the level is going to be such that as it continues to grow, the goal is to be able to attract those truly top level guys. Right now, if you think about the calendar, it's just not possible because they're they're playing in Europe and they're making lots and lots of money in Europe, which we can't possibly pay them. And in the summer when they're not playing in Europe, they're in, they're playing for the national team. So if people like chirp me online about why don't you have Taylor Sander playing for the VLA? Like when do you think we're going to have, be able to get Taylor Sander in the gym? Like use your brain about that. So maybe, but, maybe at the end of his career. Exactly. So uh, there are rumblings that a certain like American superstar pin hitter with, connections to upstate New York will be wearing a team LBC jersey sooner or later when he was starting to wane off of his career a little bit like that that sort of thing is exactly what we're looking for until the league grows to the point where we can pay the guys that are at that top level what they deserve now it was funny I, I had I had Ryan Millar on my show recently who is another 2008 
2008 gold medalist. He has a podcast on the, on like the CrossNet game platform, which is really good. Mm -hmm. And he told me about his whole overseas career. He played in Italy forever. He played in Turkey. He played in Poland. He played in Russia. Like he really did it all. And I told him, I, I asked him like, okay, so all of the cool things that you got to see that you got to do playing professional volleyball in Europe, those are unforgettable experiences. But given the option back at the beginning of your career, would you have taken slightly less money to play in the U.S.? And he instantly said, yes, no brainer. It, it was, it was like, he didn't even have to think about it. He, you could have offered him 25% less per year and he still would have taken that to play in the U S and that is the sentiment that I've gotten from absolutely everybody that the, the, the value of playing in your home country that perhaps playing in your home city even has a monetary value that's substantial. Just that the difference in lifestyle playing in your home country is worth a lot to these guys. And that's something that we're hoping to be able to offer them in addition to a paycheck that they deserve for the athletes that they are. So that's the goal. That really is the goal down the road. And I, I do see it going that way, but it's going to take a long time, a long time to get there. And we got to get over this pandemic first. Yeah. I mean, I definitely agree. I definitely think this is a step in the right direction and uh, happy that, that you guys are doing it and, and happy to check it out. Is there, is there anything before, before we be, we let you go? Uh, is there anything we missed uh, uh, that, uh, you know, the fans at home need to uh, need to know it starts, as I mentioned, 730 AM uh, for the second court. Uh, on Friday, 8 a.m. on the mainstream on YouTube. That goes all the way through. Uh, matches basically all day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And, uh, yeah, it should be awesome. Yeah, so if you want any more information about it than I've just said, if you want to refer to it throughout the weekend, uh, it's all online. So definitely give the league a follow on Instagram at VLA Volleyball. Our follower numbers are absolutely skyrocketing. It's, like, ridiculous how many followers we're getting per day. I love it. Um, that is a huge platform uh the website is where is like the, the easiest place to find all like the real detail about the tournament and how it all works so uh volleyball league of america.com or like shortened i think to usavla.com is a great resource and then where to find all the matches in particular is the youtube channel so we're streaming everything for free it's on youtube or like we already talked about how to access the streams it's all on the youtube channel and if you can, please subscribe to that and do the same to Everett's channel if you watch the video podcast version. But uh, that's really important. Not just, first of all, like you, it'll be easier for you to find stuff. And it's not like we're going to like, we don't bother you with emails. That is YouTube does that only if you opt into it. So I, I it, can, I, I can concur because I am subscribed. Me and all my ghost accounts are subscribed. <laughs> um, so, and I have never once received an email from VLA YouTube. So that's, that's a plus. Yeah, it's free to subscribe. It costs you, it, it's one click and there's no commitment and there's no like spam in your inbox or there's nothing that. So as you're watching the matches, if you like what you see, press the subscribe button. It's very important for the YouTube channel because we actually make a little bit of money off of it at no cost to you. So that's cool. Um, let's see. Oh, I just, we just launched a show this week, which was cool. On Monday night, we um, launched a live show called Around the VLA. It's kind of just All a... Right talk show it's similar to what dan and i do on the european volleyball show honestly it's the spiritually the same idea as that uh but it, me and vince from phoenix and then loy ball we're on a monday night for about half an hour just talking about the tournament looking at how the schedule works and talking about some of the teams and we made fun of loy for a highlight play that he had last year so you, a cool format that we're hoping to do week to week you uh, know what like you you've dropped loy ball so many times in this podcast i think <laughs> you need to hook me up with an interview with him uh, I, oh, I think I, I think you need to you know you need to make that connection so I can have him on the show because I would love to hear some stories from Loy Ball. I know he I I know he's got so some I, I know he's got some stories and I mean the 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 man is an absolute legend as well. You know, like who doesn't remember watching that two thousand and eight final that was such a masterpiece. Um, so absolutely. I think that you, you definitely uh, need to, uh, took me up with an interview with Loy Ball. That can be arranged. He's such a good interview. Cause it's funny. Like when I interview other people on my show and what, and whatever, in various formats, we like to give them at least a little bit of an outline of what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And every time I send one of those to Loy, he's like, don't bother. I'm just going to wing it. Like, don't, don't give me that. Beauty. That's even, know. that's even better. Cause I, <laughs> that's, that's, more, better. that's more or less what I do too. Right. So I definitely yeah. want to like, I, I bet you, you know, Loy and I could go for a while. Yeah. I, I bet he's got some stories. 
The Ooh. best place to get stories out of them is like in a random hotel room in the middle of nowhere with like a case of beers. That's really when, when it, the real gold comes out. He's like, a beer guy? Big time. Okay. Okay. Big just ju- I'm, think- I'm just doing my recon for the future because like <laughs> you know that I, if I'm at an event with Loy Ball and I've got an opportunity to drink beers with Loy Ball, I will drink beers all night long. I don't care. I right. have had that opportunity, and it's something that I look forward to every time we're in the same place. Here, there, here's case in point. Uh, I have like a rapid fire segment on the show sometimes, and when I uh, when I asked him the rapid fire question, like, "What's your favorite post game meal? Like, what's your favorite thing to eat after a match?" His answer was Bud Light. Bud Light. So okay. I, think I should tell you everything you need to know. Absolutely good. You're you're giving me some good recon here, Rob. I'm 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 very pleased. You, I'm very pleased. Well. Guys, make sure you check out um, the VLA. If you don't check it out this weekend, if you're watching it later, guess what? It's all going to be on YouTube. So you can you can check right. it out there. Yeah. You know, maybe you're listening to this years in the future and you're going back and you're <laughs> like, oh, shit, this is when the VLA was nothing. Damn. You know, hey, maybe, maybe. That's, that's wild happening. to think about. I, I'm so hoping that that, like, is the case. Like, what's up, people in the year 2027? Like, go if, check out on the matches. <laughs> if, if, if you get, if you're in the year. Wait, wait, what year are we? We're 2021. If you're in the year 2026 or later and um, you uh, uh, hear this, I, I want you to comment wherever you are, whatever platform we have in the future. It might not be even be YouTube. Who knows? Um, but I just want you to comment the spicy pepper emoji. Okay? Yes. I just want you yes. s- to spam the spicy pepper uh, emoji. Please and thank you. Um, just to let us know that in five <laughs> years' time, this is still still going. It's like a little time capsule. It's a digital time that. capsule, right? This is a great idea. Uh, also, th- this is a, a good opportunity to plug the Volleyball Source Discord again. Of course, because as always. I and I think I said it the last time I was on ever, but like, I can't tell you guys how much, how much my like volleyball worldwide volleyball experience has improved just because of the volleyball source discord. Dude, it's, it's crazy. Eh? Like it is my it's number incredible. one source for, for information. I love waiting. Yeah, now up. it's becoming like a, a legitimate like media source because people from all over the world are in there and they're so connected. Yeah. Like people are getting info from sources like like Adam Schefter on Twitter in the NFL, like breaking Straight stupid news up. about like we we know uh, about rumors. His sources. We have those. We, yeah. we know about rumors and what's going on in the volleyball world before Volleybox does, before uh, all of those places does. Do it's yeah, dude. It's, we get all these rumors and then they're all true like three weeks before I anybody mean, else knows about it. It's amazing. Other than the Pisani ones, but we don't we don't need to we don't need to talk to, talk talk about those ones. But uh, yeah, if you guys are listening to this, come join in uh, the Volleyball Source Discord. If you're a content creator, we really want you to come in, spam your stuff yeah, like every time. Point. Every time you have a podcast, post it. Um, like even one of our commandments that we were writing out today was that you know <laughs> it's to support you know content creators. So, um, and even if you're just a casual fan, you know, if you're looking for a way to. Uh, start watching volleyball and you don't know how and you don't know where just come into the the, the discord and just be a lurker because i guarantee right. you you're going to learn so much about what's going on in the world who's who who's playing where how to watch when to watch t- best teams to watch best players to watch like it, it's all there in front of you and it's literally free right there's there's even benefits right because we we threw out uh, we we threw out you know uh, discounts to 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 merch and and stuff like that and there's definitely going to be more like we're coming up on a, on 150 people and it's the best thing I love waking up in the morning and opening up me Discord. too yeah having all the, Euro- the whole, all the European chat from the night before the, the, <laughs> the different like everyone is is populating like the the different channels with with different things going on and uh yeah it's great it's really t- like turning into something special so if you like volleyball if you're a volleyball nerd if you're a volleyball fan if you're a content creator come hang out with us on the volleyball source discord and there's the there's an open invite link in the show notes here you can head over to our website um or just DM me on Instagram or DM Rob and, and the, yeah, you know, yeah, as well. I'd be like, happy to refer you. So yeah, guys. Come, it's so come awesome. Out. It has its own, it has its own little culture. It has its own memes. It has its own like inside jokes. And it has people from literally all over the world who just love volleyball so much. And it's just, and we talk it's about just growing. it everywhere. And it's growing too. Yeah. And it's a great resource too. Cause like, if you want to watch a, a match live in some random country, and you don't know how to do that somebody somewhere will find a way and they'll post it in the live stream like section 
Yeah. There's discussion at all levels about all levels of volleyball all over the world. It's like, it's a must. If you like volleyball, it's a must join. I can't S- recommend it. Seriously, enough. like we get updates about Japanese high school results. Like I'm yeah, not, I'm seriously. not, I'm not even kidding you. Well, there's there, you know, one of our members loves example. university, like Japanese, like, you know, high school and university volleyball. And not that he posts it and breaks it down for us. So you get to experience the different cultures. Of course, we got the Italians who, who always go off. It's it's really becoming a, a great source. And I'm sorry, we've kind of taken over the VLA chat here uh, to talk about the Discord. <laughs> but we're pretty much at the, ad, nope. at the end of the show I love anyways. It. So. I, I, want, I want to connect those two spheres of people. If, uh, any volleyball source fans that, if you're Canadian, if you're from wherever, if you are interested in the idea of professional volleyball in North America. Pro- professional men's wear, volleyball. Because we professional we, men's ball, right? You know, yeah, we're we're not we're not dealing with the women's side yet. Uh, maybe we do it in our format down the road. Maybe we get with what Athletes Unlimited has going on already. Who knows? But uh, if you like the professional men's game, you like the idea of that in the U.S. Um, we are the biggest and best and most polished available thing for you to follow right now. And so get on it early as we continue to grow. Also, if you like just volleyball worldwide, join the Discord. And if you are American, if you're like one of our fans and you want volleyball coverage just top to bottom, follow Everett, follow Everett stuff. Because even though it's Canadian focused, you're so in tune with everything worldwide. It's, it's another great thing to follow. Yeah, I mean, you're more than welcome to come be an American biased in the Discord as well, too. We love... Like, we please, love, I need more of you. There are too love many Canadians. We love country biases. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, I've said this before on your thing that I love being biased towards Canadians because... It's so normal t- for Americans to think that Americans are the best. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mirror that same energy <laughs> and throw it right back at right back at you guys. You know. Yeah, so. I actually really like being kind of a minority in the Discord as an American, or at least like by far the most vocal American in the Discord. This is true. Yes. Like yeah, <laughs> that normally in other applications in the world, that's not usually the case for me. So it's really fun. I really enjoy it. All right, dude. Well, thank you so much for coming on and chatting uh, about the VLA. VLA Cup going on this weekend, kicking off f- Friday morning early. So you can watch it all day long. And, uh, yeah, it should be a good one. And uh, get make sure you drink some tea, um, kind of lots of, I, pi- lots I of bought, hydration, a nice I bottle of some honey. Fancy, I bought some fancy, like, throat lozenges for professional singers the other day. So Ooh, I think that, okay. that that'll be my first time trying those, and I think it's going to help a lot. I might. All right. it certainly can't hurt. Maybe maybe in the future you can bring me down and I can jump on you to the, uh, not jump on you jump on the broadcast with you uh, for for some of those matches or both or yeah both. That, that would be that would be sweet when 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 you're allowed to cross the border again we will get you please please all right well guys have a good one watch the VL the VLA this weekend or watch it on YouTube if it's past this weekend and uh, yeah have a good one peace bye guys. Drop.